Namaste, this is Aditya and welcome to Shankar Marketing channel. In this video, I am going to show you how to create content fragments in AEM and I am also going to show you how you can retrieve the content fragments data using GraphQL IDE. If you are liking the videos which I am doing, please hit on that like button and please subscribe to my channel. Let's get started with the presentation. Okay, so first let's see how do we create the content fragments. Okay, so what are these content fragments and where exactly they are being stored? Okay, so the, all the content fragments will be available as part of the assets. Okay, if we go to assets and then files. Okay, so we retail this is out of the box uh, whatever I have got on these assets. Okay, so if I go into this and English, right? Uh, so here if you see FAQs, uh, this is uh, the content fragments. Okay, so if I just go into the company here, so these are the FAQs related to the company. Okay, so if I just open this fragment, content fragment, so this is how the content fragment will look like. Okay, so we have the question and we have the answer. So whatever data or the value which the question holds, so are you a real company? So this is the question and uh, here is the answer. Okay, in the answer uh, field we can type the answer okay so this is how the content fragment will look like now why do we use this content fragments right so generally the data whatever we are storing like this right in uh, aem we store it as part of the dialog box and it gets saved as part of the crxt right that is the normal procedure but this content fragments we create as part of the dam aem digital asset management uh, or aem assets Okay, so the purpose of creating this is to have the data stored uh, uh, independent to the context, uh, the presentation context. Okay, if you are storing it as part of the dialog box, you have already made the assumption that uh, the data is being rendered as part of the HTML, right? Because the dialog box values will be using it as part of the HTML. But here when you are saying it as saving it as part of the DAM, then we doesn't make any assumption as to how this data is being presented. Is it being presented in the HTML browser or is it being presented to the mobile or is it being presented to some chart box? Okay, so that we don't know, that we don't assume. So this data can be shared across all the devices. So that is the advantage of creating the content fragments. So this is the reusable piece of uh, certain content which can be used across the website anywhere we want. Okay, so that is the purpose of the content fragments. So now the next thing is uh, each content fragment will be dependent upon a content fragment model. Okay, what do we mean by that is like if we have to create a content fragment let us suppose then how do you create it is so you come to the uh, any of the folder in the assets and then you click on this create button. So here you will see something called as content fragment right. So when we click on this content fragment uh, create content fragment and we try to create that it will navigate us to this screen which uh, wherein it will show uh, all the content fragment models okay so these are the content fragment models okay so what is a model so model is that thing or a template which contains as to what all fields a content fragment model has to contain like for example the faq model uh, can say that the FAQ uh, content fragment should contain one field for the question and one field for the answer. So what fields should exist as part of the content fragment that will define it as part of the content fragment model. Okay, so now you can select this model and based on this model you can create a content fragment. So if you see, if we go back here and see so all these uh, content fragments which are getting created right so these got created based upon the content fragment model which is the faq uh, content fragment model so how do you see where exactly the models are getting created so for that you have to go into this adobe experience manager this main menu and you will have to go into the tools and you go to assets and here you will see content fragment models Okay, so here you go into the content fragment models and this is where we create the actual content fragment models or define the uh, content fragment models. So now here if I go into the vRetail again, so here you see the FAQ content fragment model. 
So you can just edit this model and see what all fields it contains. Okay, so this is how the model will look like. So if you see what we have defined here is the question, right? So this is a single line text. So here whatever you see on the right side, right, these are all the data types. Okay, so we can define like what all fields can be there as part of this content fragment uh, and we can also define what is the data type of that particular field. Okay, if you see here, these are all the data types which are available like single line, multi line, number, boolean. So all these are the different data types which are available and we can just drag and drop uh, the data type here and a new field will get uh, added here. Okay, so now if you select this question, right? So then you can see the related properties for this particular field. Okay, so we have named this as question, right? This field label as question and it is re rendered as a text field. So what all options you have, like you can have it as a multi field or a text field. So if you select it as multi field, then you can add multiple uh, questions basically. It, it is an array basically. Okay, so that's how it will get converted to. So uh, as of now, it is rendered as a text field. So it is a single value which you can enter. Okay, so then uh, <clears throat> this is the placeholder value uh, wherein we say enter the question, right, FAQ question. So like this, we can uh, define uh, what all uh, fields are available as part of the content fragment model. Okay, so now when we create a content fragment based on this particular model, then it will allow us to enter the value for this question and it will also enter allow us to enter the value for the answer so there could be multiple content fragments based on one friend content fragment model like for example faq what all fields should it contain like it should contain question answer and tag that is what is defined as part of the content fragment model but when we are creating the actual content fragment using this template we create the content fragment and the content fragment will have the same fields but in the content fragment it will allow us to enter the values for it here we are just defining what should be there and in the uh, in the model we define what all fields should be there and in the fragment we will enter the actual values okay so that is the content fragment model and content fragment that is the difference between them okay so all these data types you can just open the content fragment uh, uh, model and explore all these data types if you want okay so for now this introduction is enough okay so now let us see how exactly we can get this content fragment uh, values which are there as part of the dam using the graphql as i told already these are some of the content fragments uh, which are uh, created based on the faqs right uh, so now if you have to uh, expose uh, our, uh, these content fragments as an API which uh, other devices like UI front-end devices can consume then we can have, we have two options right one option is to create a servlet and another option which AEM provides is to use the GraphQL endpoint okay so what's the difference between these two let's try to understand that first so if we create a servlet right we have already seen the servlet example so the servlet will have a particular endpoint right so let us suppose if you are trying to uh, access the list of all the faqs then the url could be here en dot faqs list dot json right so to access uh, faqs there could be a different uh, url and to access uh, uh, the company information there could be another url Right. So for each of the resource which you are trying to access, you need to create one unique URL. Okay. So that is uh, uh, what we do as if we are going with the servlet approach. Right. And in the GraphQL approach, what happens is the endpoint which we are going to hit will be same. Like it, there will be only one uh, uh, one GraphQL endpoint. Whether you want to access the FAQs or company information or whatever content fragments which you want to access, you will have to hit only one endpoint. And how do you differentiate between one data type to another data type? That is using something called a schema. Okay, so we use a query based language and uh, we give uh, the schema name to actually uh, get what, what schema details we need. 
okay so this is the query language which we use so that's the main observable difference between the uh, servlet approach and the graphql approach rest everything whatever you can do as part of the graphql you could do it as part of the servlet also so what is the clear advantage which we get while using the uh, graphql based approach when compared to the api based approach so that's what we are going to see right now so let's say we want to access the employee data right uh, then in the api based approach we might create one endpoint called uh, get employee list right using that endpoint we may be able to retrieve all the employee details but as part of the employee schema or employee details we might have first name last name salary and uh, grade and n number of fields like like 50 fields right uh, which are con which might be there as part of the employee uh, object right and which could also include the employee address which could be a separate uh, resource by itself because uh, the the relationship between the employee to its uh, to his address might be one is to m right so uh, you might have to uh, in the json response which we are giving we might have to uh, encode all these addresses uh, uh, as part of the json uh, multi field and we we'll, we might have to send it and to get the employee details there could be we could send a request body like this also okay uh, for example here i am saying include address i created one field in the request body called include address and i have put it to y and i can do a post call okay this says whether i need to fetch the addresses or not because the relationship between the employee to address is one is to m i need to query in the address uh, database also and join uh, them and retrieve the data which could add to the api performance so i might give an ability for the front end uh, team uh, to uh, ask for the address only if required okay and this is the way they can send me the parameter uh, which can actually include or not include the address so uh, this is one way i could restrict but uh, but if you see right uh, uh, in the in the front end uh, when we are actually showing the employee details there could be multiple screens in which we might uh, show that particular data right employee data in one screen we might have to show only first name and in another screen we might have to show the first name last name uh, his uh, his salary grade all the profile information right including the addresses so uh, the point here is in every screen whenever we are trying to fetch the employee details we don't need need all the information about the employee okay employee might have like 50 fields but all those fields may not be required on each and every screen wherein i want to show the employee data okay but if we go with the api based approach you have just one endpoint and you hit that endpoint and you get the response okay you can send what all fields uh, you need as part of the uh, request body also like that also you can maintain but uh, in practical scenario uh, this is not how it will be done uh, right you hit the endpoint and you get the entire data and uh, uh, front end team will decide which uh, ones to show and which ones not to show that is how the api based approach will work but in the graphql based approach it gives us a ability to write the complex queries like it gives the ability for the front end team to write the complex queries and based on that what you can do is you can uh, either join the employee schema uh, with the address schema if required uh, you can just join and uh, get the details or else uh, uh, you can uh, ask for only the required uh, employee fields right uh, if you require only first name and last name you can get only those first name and last name uh, right and fetch them only and show it okay you can uh, you can basically query whatever data you need that is how you can uh, make it work if you are going with the graphql based approach so that is why graphql based approach is preferred in certain instances when compared to api based approach now let's see how exactly we are going to set up the graphql in aem okay so let us go back to our aem screen so to set up the graphql in aem first we need to go to the uh, aem uh, package manager and in the package manager you need to make sure you have installed this package okay graphql 
0.06 and whatever is the latest version right so this is the package which uh, which gives us the ability to use the graphql ide as part of aem okay unless you install this uh, graphql ide graphql graphql ide will not work basically without this okay so this is the first thing which you need to make sure you have done okay so then what we need to do is we actually need to go to the configurations so if you go to go here uh, then you go to the configuration browser okay you, you should go to the configuration browser and you need to open this global and within this global you need to allow all this to happen okay so initially all this could be null so then uh, you need to say you need to enable context of uh, cloud configuration content all this has to be enabled and especially for graphql to work the graphql persistence query has to be allowed as part of this configuration properties so this is the second thing which we need to do so after we have done this we should be creating the graphql endpoint okay so to create the graphql endpoint again we need to go to tools and you need to go to assets okay here you will see something called as graphql okay so if you hit on this graphql initially you will see uh, this to be empty like this okay so then you will you need to hit on this create button and then you need to enter these properties like this okay and once you click on the create button then the endpoint will get created like this okay so these three steps have to be done before we can actually open the graphql ide so after you have done these steps what we need to do is we just need to hit this url content slash graphql html to actually open the graphql ide okay so this is this is the graphql ide it is the apollo client and using this you can access all the content fragment information okay so this is where it gives us the ability to write the query like uh, it will give the auto sessions uh, when we hit uh, control and space bar okay but if you just open this right here you have all the documents okay here it will show all the schemas which are available for us to be for us to be able to query okay so these are all the schemas which are available okay so if you go to all content fragment models then you see here faq model okay this is the model which we have seen earlier right and this is what we are trying to get the information for okay so if you go to the faq model then it will show you what all uh, fields you can as access as part of this FAQ model. Okay, so now let's write the query, a simple query uh, to fetch these FAQ models, right? So if you just go here and click on control space, then it will give you the uh, suggestions as to what all you can write. Okay, so mutations are currently not allowed as part of AEM. Uh, mutation is nothing but if you have to save certain data, right? Then you use the mutation. So as of now, uh, it will allow us to do only query. So just uh, open this bracket. Then if you just do the um, control space bar again, you, here you have the option to query the FAQ by, by path or FAQ list. Okay, it has given us two options. So FAQ list will give us the list of all the FAQs. So we just have to put the brackets again okay and then if you just do control space bar again it will give you uh, the suggestions okay so i want to access the items of the faq list so i just click on the items so again i will open the brackets and hit on space bar control space bar so here are the fields which i can access so first one is question so i'll try to access the question and the second one is the answer right so i will hit on the answer okay now it will it is showing me an error like this so if i just highlight it will show me again like it says field answer is is of type multi format string and must have selections of subfields so what does this mean right so if you just go back to our uh, content fragment models again i will show you what exactly it means when it says multi format string okay so let's go to the models and let us open the FAQs here. So if you see the answer, if I click on this answer, then here if you see the default type of answer is a rich text, but you can show it as a, either as a markdown or also plain text. Okay, you can select uh, from these three data types actually. 
okay so to have it it is just one field but this same field can be either a rich text or a markdown or a plain text okay so it will allow us to render in any way we want okay so that is what is called when it is saying it is a multi format field right so what it is saying is we need to select what kind of field we want to show here right so if we just put brackets again and hit on alt enter see these are the different ways in which it can pull the data either it can pull it as plain text json or markdown so as of now we can select i want to show it as plain text so then if i hit this execute query this is how i'll get the response so what it does is it will go into the dam it will pull all the content fragments which are based on the faq model a list of all the uh, fragments which are based on the faq model and it will see what all details are needed question and answer and uh, these are the fields which we have requested and whatever fields we have requested it has shown here okay so this is how the graphql will work okay now if we go to this uh, content fragment model okay right uh, and then if i just get back here so how are these graphql um, schemas getting created okay so as soon as you create a content fragment model right in the back end am creates a schema graphql schema for it we need not write a piece of code for this uh, graphql schemas to get created it gets created automatically that's it for today jai hind